In our last episode, we completed leg one of our journey to San Clemente Island. Our first stop was the White Cove Anchorage at Catalina Island. Our second leg is direct to the Pyramid Cove Anchorage at San Clemente Island. San Clemente Island is one of the least visited of the Channel Islands by recreational boaters. The island is owned and administered by the United States Navy. It is the Navy's only remaining ship to shore firing range. Boaters may only enter the waters off San Clemente Island when military exercises are not scheduled. Even then, certain areas of the San Clemente Island waters are restricted. If you are interested in sailing to San Clemente Island, first check the weather forecast. Next, go to scisland.org. The U.S. Navy publishes the military exercise schedule and safety zones for the island at this website. Confirm there are no restrictions before you leave. All right, what is it, almost 5.30? We're going to start the engine here pretty soon, and haul anchor still dark out. No wind, we didn't move. Perfectly well set here. Um... So we'll, we'll get organized, haul up the haul up the anchor, and we'll start to bounce. No wind, so we're going to be motoring for, for a while. Yeah, there's a long point there. Got the spreader lights on the deck. And it's about 20 till 6. We're going to haul up. All right, we're waiting for Andy to get his ass up here so we can get this done. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Six, just departing White Cove. Maybe you can see some lights. The an anchored uh, ship here in front of us. We see a little bit of a crescent moon. It's a little bit of moonlight over the water. Almost 6:30. There's Hamilton Cove. Uh, right off of Avalon. There's Avalon. You can see the casino lit up a little bit. The sun is starting to come up, so we're starting to see some ambient light. So we've got a little better visibility now. About 10 till 7, we're right off the quarry in the southeast end of Catalina. And if you look way in the distance out there, you can actually see San Clemente Island from here. It's about 27 miles to our waypoint before we turn to the south end. So uh, it's really not super far. Visibility is great. Just sea lions on this uh, mooring can with the seagull sitting on the top of the light on it. So it's coming up the port. San Clemente Island up ahead. Southeast end of Catalina with Church Rock. 830. We're still trucking along, so we've got about 18 miles, a little under 18 miles before we hit you and we get closer to the island. So this part of the island on the north uh, is restricted right now due to operations. There's an airfield kind of on the northern side. This is uh, usually like always restricted up here. And then the rest of the sectors kind of depend on whether or not there's any schedule operations. So this first part, is off limits at least out to three miles from the island um we're well further than that right now and then towards the southern tip the sector on this side and the other for pyramid Kit cove is that's that's all open today tomorrow uh so as we get it a little bit closer we'll take a hitch over to starboard um and when, when we get to that sector that's clear We'll, we'll go in and, and uh, get a little closer look at the island. Any kind. All right. So it's about 20 after 10. We're about seven miles off of San Clemente Island. And we took a little bit of a hitch to starboard. So this, uh, this kind of sector that we're headed towards uh, going south is open without any military exercises. So we thought we would uh, turn starboard a little early so we can get a little closer look at the island. Uh, we just heard 
some booms in the distance. So it sounds like they are having some exercises with some kind of explosions uh, on the island, which they do a lot. Uh, must be hopefully on this side of the island and not the side we're gonna be on. It's in five, uh, five miles total to Pyramid Cove. But uh, we're about three miles offshore from San Clemente Island. There's a fishing boat. You see how green it is this time in March? Day after St. Patty's Day. It's really beautiful out here. Let's see if this, these guys are uh, firing offshore or something or Camp Pendleton. It's loud. Of course they stop. This mic might get these hear these rumbles of explosions. And it, you can feel the pressure all the way from here. We've got some neighbors over here. Um, see all this kelp in between us and the sailboat that's anchored here? We don't want to anchor in the kelp. Quarter afternoon, I'm calling it. Look at this. Pyramid Cove, San Clemente Island. Uncharted and uninhabited, uh, except for this fishing boat and this, uh, I think a 54 foot or an 18 meter sailboat off to uh, port back here. Bravely, port. we're kind of too close to that kelp. Man. No, we're not. I don't <laughs> no, think we're them. too close. No, them. Oh, well, they went, they either went through they it went or like they went right it. behind it. Yeah. You can see all this kelp here. This would be a great place to spearfish. So all those explosions that we heard with the live fire exercises. All right. So he just called on his GPS, his uh, locations. He's 35 miles away. And where are they detonating? Uh, south of us. Away? Yeah. Shit. South and just slightly west, 35 miles away. Damn. So and he's on AIS, so fucking... I see him, see him on AIS as well. He's in San Diego. You know. He's offshore though. He's like south. He's right. on. He's offshore. Wow. So. 35 miles isn't that far because it's not super far but i mean just did today yeah but just just like feeling like the 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 rumble the pressure and the rumble from those yeah. explosions was pretty badass That's wild. a lot of bird life you can see birds fishing flying by on the other side behind us this kelp bed you can see birds diving down and fishing a lot of a lot of them are just kind of hanging out here so i would love to dive these kelp beds one of these days i think it'd be super cool and if i came back and did that i would probably anchor in this exact same spot almost what? andy do you want to explain the situation we got here right now we are having captain's hour with captain Killdragger. And we're just having a little bit of Captain Morgan. So I've got a cocktail for the captain. Right on. Cheers. Cheers, mate. About 20 after 6. So we had about 15 knots of wind earlier. And I think these afternoon winds died. I don't know, we may get more tonight. You can see it's pretty chill. We're getting uh, inspected right now by a helicopter here at the military island. So if I had to guess, this helicopter is a subscriber to the Killdragger channel. So I just would like to make a comment. It's um, it's cruiser's midnight almost. It's almost nine o'clock. So captain's hour turned into captain's hours. <laughs> and, Sorry. Sorry, captain. And this is the bottle of, of Captain Morgan and, and what we have left of this because of this troublemaker here. <laughs> Sorry, and the debauchery. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, I'm I'm all for a good time. All good. We're snug in the in the anchorage here. It's super chill and calm. We got um, garlic butter chicken, asparagus, and James's favorite mashed potatoes. I'm about to have some dinner. It's about a quarter till seven a.m. Uh, we're waiting for the crack, a light. Looks like we have it. Get a little ambient light here. 
still have our neighbor anchored behind us the guy that's running the crab pots and we've got this uh, kelp behind us we held well we didn't have any issues um, I think the most we saw was about 15 knots it was almost zero last night and now we've got about eight knots or so of wind so we're gonna gear up we'll probably get some sailing and for sure we'll get the main up today but we're gonna go ahead and haul up the anchor now and uh, try and get the hell out of here all right she's coming right up we got another couple hundred feet to pull in I'll do some of that captain stuff and get us out of here before we're in the kelp since we're drifting. All right, 10 till seven. We are up free and clear and we're rolling. Nice work, my man. situation at quarter till eight we're still motoring uh we're just kind of recharging the batteries running starlink uploading uh footage uh via satellite and everything else but we're uh so we're motoring at cruising speed but we're getting a little bit of a tailwind uh apparent wind angle is 120 degrees ish and i'm seeing 7.4 7.3 knots of boat speed so we're cooking and true wind speed we we're seeing 17, so we've got 14 right now. So we'll charge up the batteries for a little bit longer. Um, and at some point, I think we'll put up the Starlink and put the canvas up, do a little bit of sailing. All right, so the engine's off. And from our 15 to 17 knots, uh, with a lot of it coming across the beam, we're now in what? Four knots of wind. Yeah. And we're doing about two knots boat speed. Whenever the head sails up, and I haven't trimmed the main yet, the main's actually okay. We just don't have any wind. Throwing in the towel for now. Uh, the wind's just not giving us enough. We don't want to spend three days getting back today. right off Catalina Island off the southeast end near the quarry we're motor sailing so we have the staysail and the single reef mainsail light winds we may still shake out the reef and put up more canvas we're starting to get a little bit more wind uh, coming across and, and now the now we wait to see what happens when we get into the shadow of the island to get a little bit of light rain we're off of avalon right now staysail's rolled up and the water is super flat look at that 10 till 2 just took a power nap i was uh fading pretty quickly so andy's uh just went down he's gonna take one now so we're still motor sailing but we've got the wind now coming over the starboard so i guess we'd be motor sailing on a on a starboard tack now 
we're about 12 miles out so we're, we're almost halfway between Catalina and San Pedro a bunch of wind down here so it's been sprinkling a little bit and you know you can see quite a bit there on the island especially in the west side looks like it's heavier as I look ahead and we've got good visibility I can see San Pedro from here two o'clock the weather report from Huntington Beach is that uh, they've got pretty strong winds there right now uh, we're still not seeing anything I can see this stuff over to port and then I just took a 30 degree pitch to port because on AIS we've got this ship the top elegance and they were on a close course to us they're 8.3 miles out so by turn into port I've got uh, now in a mile and a half of CPA fans of keel dragger so with reduced visibility just decided to go ahead and stay out of the shipping lane so I'm gonna gonna do a starboard to starboard pass of top elegance and we'll try and stay out of their way and then as we start getting a little bit closer we can get back on course we will so I'm, I'm about 50 degrees turn to port uh, top elegance is a 189 meters a huge cargo ship but big enough if I look ahead I can actually see it out there so without cheating Andy is going to tell us whether we're on a collision course or not for this cargo you ship point right at the bow point at the bow and then and then see the compass see yeah. the heading the bearing inside of the uh, binoculars yes sir okay what's your reading my reading and this is likely magnetic is like 119 120 okay we'll call it 120 and yeah it's magnetic. 20 degrees bearing with the uh, with the magnetic compass inside of the Nikon binoculars and it's it's 221 so we're gonna wait uh, a few minutes till about 225 maybe and then we'll do another uh, we'll do another bearing and then we'll have Andy tell us whether we're uh, on a collision course or not uh, I may have misspoke 320 was the first bearing and it's time to take a second one so Andy if you can give us an update on the bearing all right let's check it out this one we are now right about 328 328 so 320 to 328 okay now are we gonna collide are they going to pass in front of us or are we going to pass in front of them with our speed no 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 forget all that forget all that all right you'd have to tell me how to figure that out i don't know okay in five if the minutes, bearing in five minutes he's gone from 320 to 325 if this is what you're getting at so in another five minutes he'll be at 330 335 no, if you're you're overthinking it. Okay. If it's a 320, and you keep getting a bearing, and he's still at the same bearing, okay, over time, then you're on a collision course. Copy. Okay. That makes sense. When he's going up to 320 to 325, 328, he's moving faster. He's than gonna we are. he's gonna move past us. Got it. If he was going from 320 back to 310. Uh, you know 300 or whatever then you're gonna then, probably then pass we're gonna him. pass in front of him right so you can use but it if it was constant and it was 320 320 320 as we keep getting closer then you're saying we're on a closing course right then you pick up the radio and you're like yo <laughs> <laughs> hey big dog so you want me to pass in front or behind so the binoculars are kind of the deluxe way of doing that you can get a hand bearing compass 334 so he's gonna pass in front of us first easily now if I want to cheat and use AIS and I don't have any humility here. I'm, I'm fine to do that. No pride. His CPA right now, and I just turned another 10 degrees of starboard, is 1.97 miles, 1.88 miles. You know, I can see we're getting some light rain in front of us. So I expect we're gonna be rained on uh, the rest of the way in.
right before 4 p.m. Angel's Gate. Looks like we're clear of large ships coming in. Wind's been building a little. And it's a little darker out, but looks pretty good. 